Hey everybody, I was just mixing some drums here and I thought that I'd show you a couple things I often do when I'm in the early stages of mixing. Check it out. This song is called Over the Moon and it's by an artist named Adam Maloney. It was produced by my friend Andrew Hill and he said to me, I want the drums tight and big. So that got me thinking about a couple things. So I got in here and started working on the mix a little bit, just some basic EQ and basic levels and stuff like that. Found a couple things I wanted to do address in the process, mainly on the kick drums to start out with. He has a sub kick mic, he's got his D112 that's inside the kick drum and also a 47 that he's got about six inches from the front head. If you listen to these, you can hear that there's some extra boom and rumble between the kick hits. It may not seem like much right now, but I'll tell you, once you get in the mix, and, and other things I'm gonna do later on are gonna make that stuff even louder, but these low frequencies can really cloud up a mix. If I don't need them, they're not really supposed to be there, I try to get rid of them. There's also something I'm gonna do with the room mics that's gonna help me accomplish my goal of making it tighter and bigger, but we'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, next thing I went about doing is putting a gate on the kick drums. I like using gates, I've used them all my life. There's a lot of ways to use them, but I'm. I'm super precise about how I use them. So I've come up with this technique to just really be able to dial in the gates on kick drums and snares. And, and this is what I do here. First, I make a copy of the main kick track, the inside mic. It's gonna be the most isolated with a, usually the quickest and tightest punch on it. Then I pull out the strip silence I've noticed that if you don't have enough time on the start time of where it's gonna cut it, it seems like after I cut it, that thing actually moves a little bit over to the side. So I'm usually doing around 10 milliseconds. I strip it and then I put fades on everything. Then I, I go through very meticulously and check every darn hit because you're gonna find little sections or maybe a tom is gonna trigger it. All right, so we're gonna turn the fader down here and we're gonna turn off the automation on this side chain track because you need to group this with your regular kick drums in case you're doing any editing. You want this to move with that, but you wanna turn off the automation in case you're doing any volume automation on your main kick drum tracks. You don't want this fader popping up up all of a sudden. We're gonna add a send to this track and we're gonna set it to pre-fader. And then we're gonna go over to the kick tracks and we're gonna add some gates to them. I've already got some settings here that I set up before. You can mess around with these a lot. They're gonna be sometimes a little different from kick to kick, depending on what I wanna have happen. I've often found that with the sub kick, I actually want the attack slightly slower. Important thing here to look at is the range. I'm not totally getting these things off. I'm only cutting this stuff down between 14, 15 dB and maybe 10 dB because I don't want it to totally go away. That's gonna sound unnatural. I'm just trying to like give a little space between the hits here. The beauty of doing it this way is that it's only the kick hits on this track. So you can like put that threshold back. You don't have to worry about it clipping off anything. It just makes it super easy. It's a little bit extra work, but there's other benefits to this as well. For instance, if you want to use some sort of sound replacer plugin like Trigger, for instance, you can use this same track here and it's just going to be hitting just those kick drums. You don't have to worry about anything else triggering it by accident. Once you get this set up, you can do a lot of stuff with it. Back to the room mics. All right, all right. I know what some of you guys are thinking right now. Like, oh, why don't you let the drones be organic or let everything ring or something like that? Look, I get it. I've recorded and produced and mixed drums where I'm using three mics and all that kind of stuff. That's not what I'm doing here. This is a very specific sound that I'm trying to get. So before you get there and make all your funny comments, just chill come back for some other episodes, I'll be covering that sort of stuff. Right now, I'm going for a specific drum sound. You can hear that it's actually adding a lot to the snare sound. I just wanna beef it up a little bit, make it a little more exciting, so I just put a little bit of EQ on it. Another thing I like to do is to make it pop with a little distortion. I like the Lo-Fi plugin in Pro Tools, but Devil Lock works equally as well, even better sometimes. And there's a plugin called Camel Crusher that I like that I can no longer use, but uh, that, that sucker really worked good on this sort of thing. I like what it's doing to the snare drum and the toms when they're playing, but it's just making the kick drum a little too boomy. So I need to find a way to get the kick drum out of it. I can EQ a little bit, but I need to do more. So I wanna put a gate on it and I wanna trigger the gate from the snare drum. So I'm gonna go back and do what I did before with the kick drum, but with a snare drum. 
So here I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of the snare track. I'm going to pull out the old uh, strip silence plugin. I'm going to strip that out. I'm going to put fades on it. And then I got to go through bit by bit and make sure that I'm not clipping off the beginning of any notes and also that I'm not getting any tom hits. Sometimes I'll even go through on like on some of these fills right here and I will separate them. I just want to have that gate cutting in and out maybe in between some of these notes. It's maybe a little bit of overkill, but you know, that's kind of what I do. So um, you go back to the mixer here. We pulled down the side chain track fader, turn off the automation. Like before, we might be doing some automation on the snare drum. We don't want this fader coming up. We're going to do a send here, make sure it's pre-fader. That's going to go over here to the gate that I'm going to put on the room mics. We're going to make sure that we're using the side chain from the side chain snare drum track and make sure that we engage the side chain as well. And then we just start adjusting things here. We just want that room mic to pop a little bit more when the snare drum hits. The range is not set 100%. I'm just kind of messing with it a little bit. I Sometimes we'll take it down to maybe 18 or 20 or something like that. On this one, I'm, I'm doing it a little bit more. But once again, the beauty of this thing is that it's gonna work no matter what, and I don't have to worry about triggering something else. And once again, I could make a copy of the sidechain track and use it for a sample replacement type plugin like Trigger or something like that. I wanted this to pop a little bit more. So I did something I've never done before. Usually I will add compression, and I like to have a really crunchy compression like this. Check this out. But it didn't sound the same before the gate, so I actually stuck it after the gate, which is kind of new for me. And that's it for this step of the process. Like I've said before, these are my techniques. They might work for you, they might not, but this tool that I showed you today is useful for a lot more things than just what I showed you. Make sure to subscribe because I'm gonna be putting up more videos that show more of my process for mixing drums. Thanks for watching. Billy.